Okay, so with bipartite graphs, what you need to know is that um, you're not always going to be able to find a complete matching. So by complete matching, I mean that uh, we are in a situation where we've been able to get our five employees, mat each one of them matched to one of the five tasks. Okay, if that is the case, then perfect, we have a complete matching. But that isn't always the case. You may have five workers and six um, actual tasks for them to do. And all we can do is find a maximal matching. So this idea of a maximal matching is something that we have to be aware of. There may be um, five people five employees, five tasks, but one of the employees knows how to do two of the tasks, and that's it. So you could have a situation where you had your five people, five tasks, and this employee knows how to do those two tasks, and the rest are like this. Okay, the rest of the workers know how to do these three tasks, but there's one worker that only knows how to do those two tasks. Okay, so in this case, there can't be a complete matching, even though you have five employees and five tasks. Okay, so the best I could possibly do in this case is match or try to match uh, five workers with four jobs. Okay, so those kind of situations are there. I mean, complete matchings can be found in some cases. Sometimes it's a maximal matching. But at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through an example of how all this works. Now, the actual algorithm that we're working through is really known as an alternating path algorithm. Um, and what, how it works is that you have your bipartite graph like this. And let's say I've got my five workers and my five tasks. And we say that there is an initial matching that is first found. Okay, so let's say um, the boss of the five employees sits down and goes, right, okay, well... Um, a can go with task 4, B can have task 2, C can have task 1, uh, D can have task 5, and E, oh no wait, E uh, will have to do task 1 because that's the only one they can do. And then suddenly they go, oh right, okay, well that's going to muddle everything up. Okay, so let's start with that and then find an improved matching. Okay, so... First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the edges that we have as an initial matching. The initial matching will be given to you in the exam. So A4, uh, B2, C1, and D5. Okay, so that's the first thing to do. Now, the second thing to do is then to say, right, okay, well, what is not yet connected? And we're going to box the E and the 3, because it is currently E and 3 that aren't connected. I have no one doing task 3, and E currently has no job to do. <coughs> so, what I now do is I try to find an alternating path, an alternating by the meaning of that it goes from one side to the other, okay, so it alternates which side, and it is a path through from E, from one of the boxed vertices, to one of the other boxed vertices. So I'm going to try and find a route that gets me from E to 3. Now what I'm allowed to do is I'm allowed to travel from left to right along these lines, 
but along the shaded lines, I travel from right to left. Okay, right. Probably best if I do this way. Okay, so left to right along the black lines, right to left along the red lines. So from E, I must then travel to 1. That's the only way I can go, so I go to 1. Then from 1, the only route out is to get to C, because I can travel from right to left along the red lines. So that gets me to C. Then I have to go from C to 4. Then I have to go from 4 to A. Then from A to 5. Then from 5 to D. And then from D to 3. Okay, So that's now found me a route, an alternating path that gets me from E to 3. Okay, Now, what's happened is that I've travelled along 1C, 4A and 5D, and I'm now going to replace these with E1, C4, A5 and D3. Okay, so these were the old initial matchings that are now redundant. And I'm replacing three of the choices with now four new ones, which will work. So what I have now, if I redraw the bipartite graph, I'm not going to draw it, redraw it entirely, okay? Uh, a, B, C, D, E, and one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've got E connected to 1. I've got C connected to 4. A connected to 5. And D connected to 3. Okay, and the only one that I didn't travel along in my alternating path was B2. So that one remains the same. And now I have a complete matching here, because all of my workers are attached to one of the five tasks. So I finally write down that the final complete matching is A5, B2, C4, D3, and E1. Okay, and that is my complete matching. OK? And that's how the alternating path algorithm works. It's really this key step, making sure you can identify these ones are being deleted and being replaced with these four blue ones. OK?